Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game to the Com video, we're going to be discussing both AMD's upcoming Polaris 12, yes, Polaris 12, as well as at least a little small update on NVIDIA's Volta architecture. Before we get into the whole thing, I'd like to thank Yaz via email, as well as John via uh, Facebook for the tips. Now let's focus on Polaris 12. So a couple of days ago, I did point out what the hell is going on with Polaris 12. After all, the name Polaris 12 is not a performance indicator. It is merely to say that it's designed after Polaris 11, which in and of itself was designed after Polaris 10. With that said, there has been some confusion because we don't just have Polaris 12 to contend with. We also have Polaris 10 XT2, which the name at the very least implies is a dual GPU, but Considering Vega is on its way, where that fits in, well, we just don't know. But at the very least, we can answer the performance, most likely, of Polaris 12. So, this information comes from three sources. The first is a Linux patch, which contains multiple references of Vega 12. The second is our good friend, Ashes of the Singularity. And our third friend is GFX Bench. So let's tackle one at a time. First of all, Ashes of the Singularity. So first of all, the device ID indicates there are two Polaris 12s at the very least. And uh, the first is 698000, and the second one is 699F colon C5. Now, as one can clearly see, they're using the same CPU, the same preset, um, and of course DirectX 12, but there is subtle differences in the number of frames per second that the actual game manages to, to achieve. Now it's not exactly going to break uh, any records and this certainly indicates that the GPU is not going to let's say outperform, oh I don't know, a GTX 1060 or something along those lines, but at the very least it does answer some questions. So let's look at a couple of other benchmarks, one of those being from GFX Bench. So GFX Bench is another popular one for leakers to, or rather uh, people to start looking at for leaks. And there is an obvious pattern here, and that is that the GPU does not perform quite as well as the GTX 1050. Now, I'm not saying that the card is worse than the 1050 for a couple of reasons. A, we don't know the state of the drivers. B, we don't know the state of the silicon. And C, we don't know the price point. So, for sake of argument, if it's like $30 or $40 cheaper than the 1050, or if they're still bringing up the drivers, or if the silicon's only running at like, you know, 80% of the final clock speed, we do have to take that into account. But at the very least, we can make some very good... Uh, guesses as to the GPU not being faster than this price point. So it would appear at the very least that like this GPU is going to roughly compete with the GTX 1050, whereas the RX 480 is roughly competing with the, G with the GTX 1060. I say roughly because right now with the state of the drivers, the RX 480 has considerably improved with its driver revisions, and it does appear that the GPU definitely has uh, improved quite a bit uh, with its uh, with its uh, facing off against the GTX 1060, whereas in this case the Polaris 12 is definitely losing to the GTX 1050. But I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and say that the final version is going to be maybe 10 to 20 percent faster. But even so, in many applications, it would appear that the GTX 1050 does get the clean win, which you know, once again, does depend upon the pricing. I guess the final thing that we should discuss then is Volta. So, just so we're all clear, Volta is the successor to Pascal. And there are a couple of things we need to bear in mind when it comes to this. First and foremost is that the GPU is not coming out until most likely 2018. Now, bear in mind, there have been multiple reports one of the more respected, and I used large quotation marks there, is that a while back on Beidou, a leaker by the name of USG Ishimura mentioned that there was going to be a 14nm Pascal refresh, and that would be hitting, at some point, 
in 2017. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if that does still happen and Volta being hitting in 2018, because otherwise, it essentially means that NVIDIA have no new product, at least for the desktop, for a good, you know, a good while. And depending on what happens with Vega, that can be a long time in the GPU market, but obviously we're going to have to wait to see how AMD can uh, counter with Vega. So enough of that stuff. Let's talk about actually Volta. Now the top end chip is GV100, and obviously the lower end ones I'm presuming are going to be like GV106, GV104, you get the idea. So a Summit supercomputer actually provides the information of at least a, an inkling of an information of the Volta VG100. Now, essentially, you're looking here at a supercomputer which is going to outperform the previous generations which had something along the lines of Kepler plus Optron processors in them. Now, each node has 512 gigabytes of DDR4 memory plus HBM, which we can make an assumption is going to be found, of course, in Volta. Back in the days of Pascal, back in 2015, NVIDIA actually made a claim that they were going to stick 32 gigabytes of HBM2 memory on Volta, and it would be running at one gigabyte per second of memory bandwidth. That didn't happen. Instead, they managed to achieve just uh, 16 gigabytes and 700 and... Uh, 20 gigabytes per second, I believe it was, of memory bandwidth. Now, that wasn't really NVIDIA's fault as so much. I think they just... I think they were a bit enthusiastic. And what happened, basically, is that their memory for providers just couldn't give them the RAM that they required in any decent quantities. And that's why we ended up in the situation they did. I'm going to make an assumption that this is another reason that AMD have held back on Vega. Obviously, I'm speculating a little bit there. So it would appear, at the very least, each node is rated at over 40 teraflops. Now, this would mean, at least theoretically, and obviously theoretically is not necessarily the same as reality, that each of these GPUs can theoretically put out anywhere from between 7.6 T-flops at double precision to around 9, possibly 10-ish at um, if you're hitting at 300 watts. So 200 watts, you're looking at, once again, about 7.6 teraflops at double precision, while at 300 watts, obviously, it's probably going to be a little bit higher and around the 9-ish mark, which is still very, very impressive. Most likely at this point, we're still going to see the full capacity of HBM2 found in Volta, and we can also presume this will mean 32 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte per second of memory bandwidth. Now, the reason I'm not spending a lot of time on this is because, well, first of all, a lot of this is speculation based upon data center information, which doesn't necessarily translate too well to the average desktop user. Even in 2018, I wouldn't be surprised if 32 gigabytes of HPM is a tad excessive for the average game even if you're running at 4K. And for B, well, it's not coming out until 2018, most likely for desktop. Therefore, we've got quite a while. However, I did want to tell you about it simply because it's kind of interesting, if nothing else. But with all that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.